Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Stage, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the view of us, I've got a No Man's Sky video. Well, a No Man's Sky video, it's more one of these cup of tea with Captain Steve videos where we talk about something that's happening in the verse. Hmm. We're thinking, well, there isn't much that's been happening in the verse. I've been watching Twitter, there's only been a couple of posts by the Murray, and there's been nothing of interesting or aught. Yes, and you'll be right, people in the view of us. This is over in the content creation space. Let me bring up my reaction cam and we'll take a quick look see at what's been going on, people in the view of us. Kaboom! And there I am on the Tinterwebs. And I'm on Jim's official. Go, oh, Jim Games official. Sorry. It's changed a few times, hasn't it, Mr. Jim? <laughs> yeah. It was, I believe it was Jim's creative No Man's Sky right at the start. But yes, it's gone through a few iterations and I'm liking your new logo. Looks pretty darn freaking awesome, sir. Yes, I guess it does. Pretty gnarly. Anyway, let's scroll on down. You can see here, I've watched one of your videos here. I've also watched this one with the ships that you've done. I really really liked your actual recommendation for my ship, Mr. Mr. Jim. Aptly picked. Heck yes, he, he found a red and white anvil of destiny. Pretty nice. Anyways, let's hit on up this one here, because this is the one that I want to sort of bring to your attention, people, inside of the viewer verse. Let me just check that. Uh, yeah, my PC volume is quite loud. I'll just play the first little bit of his video so you can take a quick watch. There we go. Sounds almost movie cinematic, that, Jim. Pretty darn awesome. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Jim Games. In the background, it's an old video, right? So don't worry. I know that was in time then, but it's, I need to discuss you folks about uh, something I've worked out, okay? Now then, I was going to do a playthrough for the Dreams of the Deep, right? So I could get that lost Bathame helmet. So I went in there, right, and I actually forgot that I'd had the easy mode settings on, you know, in the cheat menu. Anyway, I thought to myself, well, I'm not dying here, right? And I thought to myself, hold on. And I went to the settings and I found out the cheat menu was on. And I thought to myself, hold on, this is a quest line in the game. So does that mean everybody can put the cheat menu on in these story mode storylines in the game? and just complete them and get all the badges, get everything without any effort, okay? Because those storylines were all about doing the grind, okay? So that got me thinking even more, right? Now then, as Hello Games shot themselves in the foot now, right, with this cheat menu, does this mean they cannot effectively put any kind of story mode into the game now, any new storylines? Because think of it this way, Anybody could just jump into the cheat menu, right? And just change the settings to easy, everything free, and just fly straight through a storyline right to the very end, right? Without any effort, right? Because we did those storylines in the past because there were... Okay, so I think you kind of get the general gist of where Jim's coming from on this one. Now... I kind of have to agree with him to a certain degree. I mean, I've done videos on the Waypoint update already and how I feel that maybe it will detract from people actually playing through the game and feeling that they've actually achieved or earned things. Because yes, whenever they get stuck, rather than jump online and look up a video on how to do something, they can just flick that switch on the actual game mode and just change it up a bit, people in the view of us. So I do kind of agree to some degree when it comes to all of that sort of shenanigan. So I don't think Jim actually shows what he calls the cheat menu inside of his video. So you know what, I'm just going to jump inside of game and show you the menu that he's on about. So here we go. Let's jump on over into the game. Okay. So if you just bring up the options screen here and go to options and go to difficulty settings right here. You can just change the mode to creative if you want, get a load of stuff for free, or you can even set everything all the way down to the lowest forms all the way across the board. And you yes, you can skip quite a swathe of information. I mean, but Story progression, you're still going to have the text come up. You've still got the actual choice whether you want to read or not the text. I still feel that Hello Games could do something a little more around the main story arcs, even if it was voiced by, say, the you know, Talamon, the Exo-type droid that you've got on your shoulder, that I call Exo anyway. 
You know, there are ways and means that they could make the story more engaging, but I already thought that even in normal mode, there's a lot of people that just hammer the button and just skip through all of that lovely lore anyhow. So I, I still think Hello Games are going to implement lore into game. I mean, you could quite as easily say, well, maybe they won't add anything in when it comes to trade because people can just go into the menu, change it to make everything free. So what's the point in having extra trade mechanics? Yeah, I kind of feel that you could actually apply the same sort of theory that Jim has applied to the story to everything. You know, why add in new ships and things? Because yes, now we've got this god mode. You, you, you can just go and buy whatever ship you want as soon as it freaking comes in, just by turning it to three. So I don't think... Um, I don't think it's going to detract from Hello Games putting anything else into the game. And when it comes to Waypoint, I'm wondering whether they've put in this, um, you know, this update called Waypoint. It's like if you're on your way to a destination... Uh, on like a sat nav a waypoint would be something that you set in there oh, I, I want to stop at this service station two hours into my journey and then yeah, you know, have something to eat and then set off again that's a waypoint that you've set on your journey I'm wondering whether this update called waypoint the last one that we had is just a marker for something that's coming in the future and I'm wondering whether they've put in this sort of god mode sort of menu or this cheat menu as Jim calls it some sort of and a way to sort of tailor your experience maybe they are going to add in more hostile planets where maybe the mega worms or the mega fauna might attack you maybe they're going to add in more aggressive pirate systems and up the combat i mean if we're given us two combat updates last year it kind of feels that they're setting stepping stones to something more and i'm wondering whether you know we might get an update called destination or final destination or something and that comes after a waypoint. You have reached your destination, I guess. And maybe it's a bigger, more involved update. And maybe this sort of difficulty settings mode will make more sense then. Maybe it's for the people that don't want to have to go for all of that or just tuned in for a relaxing affair. Now they can tailor it to how they want. So I'm wondering whether there's more to this um, difficulty setting. At first, I thought it was for Switch players, because, you know, Switch players are on the go, they're on a mobile device or whatever, and their battery might be running out, so maybe they might want to just flick it into creative mode, get it, get it done quickly, save their game, log out, then put it back to normal mode at some point. That's why I thought they put this in, which I thought was a bit of a cop-out, to be honest, and only tailoring to one audience. But you know what? I've used this menu quite a lot, especially when it comes to activating a portal and you've got to drag the resources and drop the resource out. Can't be asked. Done it a million times. Stick it in creative mode. Click, 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 click. All the way around in a circle. Done. Go through the portal, change it back to normal mode. So I do use it, and I do use it when I'm making bases as well. Flip it into creative mode. Be as creative as I want with a base. Put it back to normal mode. Save. Done. <laughs> so I do use this menu myself, and I do see it freeing up time for myself. So you know what? I wasn't a great advocate of this menu when it first dropped but you know what now that i've warmed to it and i use it for what i want to use it for use it for what you want to use it for not going to criticize anyone for the way they want to play do i think it's going to restrict what hello games adds into the game no i kind of feel that they've given us the this sort of god mode or cheat menu or whatever you want to call it menu settings menu just to sort of give more control to the player so you can actually customize the way you play the way you want to play and i think that's pretty much it it just it just took the actual community i think by surprise and i think it did detract from some people that have plowed so many hours into the game thinking well now people can just flip a switch get to where i got to in the space of a month so it it kind of detracts from everything i've done just try not to think of it just try not to think of it that way. Just carry on playing that you way you want to play and enjoy the game would be my advice. Okay, right, so we've reacted to that video. There is another video that I want to react, which is which is Professor Cynical's video. So here we go, let me um let's just jump on over onto my reaction cam. Boom! I'm back over on the Tinterwebs and we're on Professor Cynical's channel. Hey guys! Hello there, Mr. Professor Cynical. I'm just gonna have a swig of my tea before we do this one, people. Mmm. Freaking nice. Thank you. Lovely job, Louis. Sweet. Okay. I do love the fact that you've got a little tinfoil hat on your gecko over there. Conspiracy theories. Making the rounds. I did enjoy that video, but that's not the one I'm reacting to. Heck no. The one I'm reacting to is the one that really got me sort of going, oh, 
I wish. And it's this one here. Let's go and hit this one up, and I give you the basic premise, and then I give you my thoughts and feelings, just like I did with Jim's. Here we go. Let's hit this one up. I was watching Rice's Starship Emporium stream this morning when my eyeballs suddenly imploded, and that got me thinking. This is what the next big update could look like in No Man's Sky. I do love your new intros. I really do love your new intros, Mr. Cynical. I woke up this morning trying to pick all the boogers out of my nose. I think that's on your next one, the living frigate one. Freaking awesome. Anyway, let me just turn on the closed captions so I can see what you're saying. I've gone ahead and installed a bunch of different mods that absolutely crank up the game to 11. So let's get into today's video and I'll show you what just could be possible and what could be in the next really big update. So let's get into today's video. So first of all, let's talk about terrain generation and how it actually currently works in No Man's Sky. Now, No Man's Sky was originally meant to use something called a super formula. However, there's a lot of controversy around that and I won't go into too much into it today. However, thanks to mods, look at the ocean behind us. It is still completely possible to overhaul No Man's Sky without such super formula madness and make the game look absolutely amazing. I have to agree with him. That ocean does look amazing. I mean, look at these kelp sacks with these sort of antennae coming out of the freaking oceans. And a little bit later on, he shows other planets. I mean, look at that. With all these volcanoes going off and all this lovely foliage. Let me just hit play so you can see this in action. Actually, let's make this full screen. It deserves and it demands to be full screen. And let's uh, just make sure that I've got the settings well up to the freaking nines. Here we go, go. So I found this volcanic planet and again, look at the sheer girth of everything. It is absolutely mind-blowing just watching all these volcanoes that are dotted all around you, all going off at different times, and it just brings that that almost immersion, especially like a... Okay, now, as much as I would love something like this to happen to No Man's Sky, um, he's already just said that, you know, he's had to crank up his uh, graphics PC to the freaking levels, you know, just to actually achieve this. That's not going to happen with Switch. He even raises this same point himself in this video, that it can't come to Switch. It probably couldn't come to next gen. But what about current gen? You know, PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, and maybe the S. You know, what about high-end PCs? Now, he did mention that he had put in all the sorts of uh, links for the mods inside of here. I'm just taking a quick look-see. I can't see them there unless... Is it this one? I don't know. No, I don't think it has. I, I don't see the actual links to the mods. However, I would love to know what mods you're using, Professor Cynical. Mainly because I'm actually thinking, on my PC, I haven't got that far with my No Man's Sky save. I was wondering how the actual community might feel about me doing a modded, fresh save on my PC and just playing through using the mods that you've got installed here. I mean, this this one here is actually a frost world that he's standing on right there. Look at that. I hate frost worlds, but that one looks freaking amazing. I'm not going to lie. I would, I would spend time exploring these planets with this modded sort of action, you know? So, yeah. As much as I would love to see this sort of stuff come into No Man's Sky, what I would like to see is now we've got 256 galaxies or 254, but if Hello Games shrunk them down to maybe say 16 galaxies related to the glyphs, and each galaxy added in a mod that does something like this to each of the different galaxies, so each 16 different galaxies and they're all freaking different, and it makes it feel like you need to progress through all of them. And maybe you get a reward at the end of each one, you know? Something really cool, like the Golden Vector, or something worth having, you know? And, um, yeah, and make them all very different. I think that could be awesome. That could be blinking awesome. Anyway, people, they're the two videos that I've found this week that I've been super stoked for with inside of the No Man's Sky verse, or at least made me think inside of my head. Wow, yeah. Or um, decent discussional points, you know, it's like that video of Jim's. It may, it may restrict what Hello Games decide to put into the actual universe, but I don't think it will. I mean, sound off in the comments. Let me know if you if you feel Jim's could be right on this one. I mean, he could be. 
You know, we might not ever see any more lore go into No Man's Sky and story arcs. I mean, when was the last time they added a new story arc? It's been frickin' time! And um, let's face it, they had all that lovely lore that uh, Jeff Buchanan came in and wrote for them, um, what, two summers ago? So we're talking two years ago. All the stuff about Ariadne going missing into the realm of glass or the void or whatever... And, um, you know, introduced new characters, Astara and Hildebrand and men, and countless others. Well, not countless others. There's probably about four others or something. No, there's four total, roughly. But yeah, not like Narcissus and stuff like that. Anyway, we've never heard mention of them ever again. And we've, we don't even know what's going on with the doppelganger that it is Ariadne standing in our nexus right now. They've got all that lore. That's, that all exists. It's all in the game file somewhere. They could have activated it. They could have put it live as a, another arc for all of the, you know, the Switch players to enjoy. Considering it's a solo experience, that's what I half expected to happen during Waypoint. I expected that to come back. Didn't. I'm completely wrong when I came to that sort of speculation. Um, but, you know, I've been banging on about the Realm of Glass and going to rescue Ariadne inside of the Void or the Realm of Glass for freaking eons. Hasn't happened, so I've got that wrong. So, you know, I've got a lot wrong. So let's um, let's see if, um, you know, Jim could be right. We might not have, ever see any more story go in. Now, I would like to hope that I'm right that Waypoint was called Waypoint for a reason, and hopefully we're going to get a bigger, meaningful update that makes sense of that menu and everything else that um, has come prior to it, you know? So something that I want to reiterate, I mean I did a video around Waypoint at the time of its launch and I still feel the same way now, that maybe that menu should be completely greyed out until you've actually completed the very first galaxy. So you've either reset the galaxy or you've got to the centre of the galaxy and you know, reset the simulation or whatever. And then at the end, maybe it's a new game plus reward and then you can actually swap the game modes. Because you know, that by, by that time, you know that it's a simulation and it gives you more control over the simulation. It's like Neo in the Matrix when he finds out that he can control the actual Matrix, he can do what he pretty much likes. And I kind of feel that it would have tied in so well to the law if they would have given you that and maybe, I don't know, put in Atlas commands rather than, you know, game settings. Atlas commands. You've now got power to actually control the simulation, you know? And then maybe that's why Null has gone completely freaking mental because, you know, he's got the same menu. Who freaking knows? But it could have tied in quite nicely, if you it, get what I'm saying. Out of all the updates that Hello Games have given us, how many duff ones have we had? Waypoint for me has been the biggest duffer out of the whole freaking lot. Um, but other than that, you know, there's been a couple of updates that have been... Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's all added new stuff to do or new stuff to see. So, you know, you've got to be thankful for it. It's like the bite beat update. A lot of people will say that was a bit of a duffer. But it's not if you enjoy making music, is it? And you enjoy having a bit of extra ambiance inside of your bases. I mean, some of the bases, like that giant freaking retro ghetto blaster that I think Veritas Vela's made, freaking outstanding stuff, you know? So, it is what it is, people inside of the viewerverse, isn't it? You make No Man's Sky the game that you want it to be, and you play it the way you want it to play. And it's even like the modding. When you know, Professor Cynical sort of video that he done, you know, people inside of the PC verse have got that as an extra thing that they can do, and it's something that I'm thinking. Well, I've done everything in Flat No Man's Sky, and I have got a PC that can play modded No Man's Sky. You know, so I think that gels both of those videos together. That new sort of cheat menu lets you play the way you want to play on all platforms. Modded videos and modded play is another sort of avenue to play on the PC. So, you know, it is a sandbox experience. Maybe we need to embrace that a little bit more is where I'm going with this video, people in the view of us. And maybe that's the direction that Hello Games is looking to push or steer No Man's Sky into, is more into the sandbox sphere. So what might they introduce? I'm thinking maybe more player-driven content. I mean, how cool would it be to actually create your own expedition-type things with inside of No Man's Sky that other players can then run? But for them to get that working and operational, they need to get sort of multiplayer operational, I believe, on side of Switch. You know, unless it could be a new way of play where you can still create these things, players can still pick them up, and maybe they don't need multiplayer because you can do it solo. 
I don't know. Uh, ways and means, ways and means, but I would never write off Hello Games as doing something that doesn't break the mold or push the boundaries of what their engine can do because they keep doing it themselves. I mean, it was a miracle that they brought it to Switch in the frickin' first place. Anyway, people, that's everything that I've got on those two videos, and it... Uh, I really did enjoy watching both of those videos, people in the view of us. Anyways, I'm going to go and have another little swig of my tea. I'll put links to both of those videos inside the video description. Go watch them both up in their fullest because they, they are worth a watch. Anyway, I'm going to have a sip and then I'll catch you on the flip side. Take care all. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.